The subject of meta humor is something that I've seen pop up more and more over the years. Basically, it's the act of being self-referential. Cartoons have been able to use this over the years as a way of breaking the fourth wall to make a joke either about the show itself or stuff going on in the real world. You know, you've got stuff like Chider turning live action for a couple minutes, as in the show they run out of animation budget, The Simpsons inserting Mac Reining into their scenes, or Sonic Boom and its many. Many jokes at how awful the Sonic fanbase is. No joke, they do it like every episode in season two. He's just a fan. I've got dozens of them. Of course, he's the first one who doesn't criticize everything I do. I think meta humor can be really funny at times. It's a good excuse to be self-aware for a bit and acknowledge your audience, almost like they're speaking directly to you. But is there ever a point in which meta humor can go too far? The answer is yes, and Rick and Morty season five is a prime example of it. Yep, I'm finally doing it. Long ago, I made an unspoken promise to myself that I'd never make a video about Rick and Morty, but I've caved in. Here we are, the long-awaited Rick and Morty video. L.S. Mark and Rick and Morty. 100 videos? L L.S. Mark, Rick and... Okay, I'll stop. But what made me finally drop that rule and make a video about it? Well, let's start from the beginning. As it's something to do with the show's writing that I feel requires getting a general overview of what the show was, and what it was trying to be at the start of its run, compared to now it is. Rick and Morty is an adult animated comedy airing on Adult Swim. It stars Rick Sanchez and Morty Smith, two not-so-subtle knockoffs of Doc and Marty from the Back to the Future series. Just going on wacky space adventures with Rick's portal gun, going to different alien plants to do whatever Rick wants that episode. Now, I didn't start watching the show until around the midpoint of season two, and I loved it immediately. Its style of humor really resonated with me, and apparently a lot of other people too, as the series had slowly been building what would become one of the biggest fan bases for any TV series airing at the time. However, a sad causation of the show becoming so big is that starting with season 3, you could kind of feel the show's cultural significance starting to seep into it a bit, with it reveling in how cool and epic it was, then proceeding to talk about Reddit and Minecraft and all this rad shit that's hip with the kids. Felt like the show was developing a, a bit of an ego. Really though, what convinced me to finally tackle the show was the season 5 finale. It was the big return to the lore they had been setting up all the way back in season 1. Season 5 up until the finale, it felt like the show was finally getting back to basics. Not every episode was a hit, looking at you Sperm Baby and Voltron 1, but overall I enjoyed quite a few of them, such as the one between Morty and Planetina, and the one about Morty trying to get the wine for Jessica. I'm not saying the titles because they're getting so convoluted to this point that I don't even remember what any of them are called. The season ends with a big two-parter, with the first exploring how toxic of a relationship that Rick and Morty have with each other, and the second featuring them returning to the Citadel of Rick's, where they finally meet Evil Morty, who within minutes destroys the entire thing, wipes out thousands of Rick's and Morty's, and leaves the self-contained multiverse that Rick has made for himself, where he remains as the smartest man in the universe, escaping in a new yellow portal. But I want to look past that. What a big game changer this was. And instead of endlessly speculating about where the series is going to be headed now after this, I want to focus on the writing of this finale. And how through its use of meta humor, it didn't manage to elevate anything happening within the episode, and instead caused it to feel it making me immersed or care about anything going on in such a huge series shattering event. So this is going to be less of a, I didn't enjoy the season finale of Rick and Morty, because that's definitely not the case, I enjoyed it quite a bit, and more of a, I'm worried about the future of the show, and this episode perfectly encapsulates why. By the way, speaking of huge, I just got this huge package sent to me by Manscaped.com, filled with many amazing men's grooming products. This video is sponsored by Manscaped.com. Manscaped offers the best tools and liquid formulations for your body. They hooked me up with this all-in-one performance package 4.0. Check it out, it's got the Lawnmower 4.0 body trimmer. With waterproof trimmers and advanced skin safe technology. They even sent this wireless nose and ear hair trimmer, deodorant, and look, for a limited time you can get all this, plus two free gifts, the shed travel bag and boxer briefs. So go to manscaped.com today and get 20% off, plus free international shipping, plus two free gifts when you use promo code LSMARK at checkout. Now that's a lot of pluses. And thanks to Manscaped.com for sponsoring this video. Now Rick and Morty is no stranger to meta humor. I mean hell, they've been using it since the first episode. But when it comes to these types of jokes, I think it's always important to consider the context they're being used in. For example, don't put some dumb jab at the audience in a scene that's meant to be taken seriously. Whoa. 
dead wife? Yes, now everyone can shut up about it. <laughs> I think the reason it's begun to bother me so much in the most recent season is because of how different the show currently feels compared to seasons one or two. See, starting with season three, it really felt like they were trying to shake things up and be overly ambitious with the story they were telling. The first episode made it seem like it was going to be the best season yet, and still one of my favorites of the series. Getting to see Rick completely dismantle the Citadel purely by using his intellect was fucking rad. It felt like a big finale. But when you're at a point where you feel like you've pushed things to its limit, where do you go from here? And that's when the sad truth set in. Despite starting off strong, this wasn't gonna be the best season of Rick and Morty. It was gonna be the worst. They just... tried too hard to deconstruct themselves. Beth and Jerry get a divorce so Dan Harmon could put his fictional characters through the same situation he was going through at the time. They had episodes like Pickle Rick, which foolishly featured characters in-universe breaking down what exactly Rick's character is in an attempt to come off as deep, bro. And in what I think was the biggest mistake of the show, they made Morty jaded. Rick and Morty had a perfect dynamic. You have one guy be cocky, pretentious, and had the power to back it up, but also got way in over his head at times. And you pair him up with a clueless kid who's just long for the ride, but also has a big heart and wants to go against his grandfather at times due to his empathy for others. But with season 3, Morty became way more desensitized to the world around him. And with that I feel it ruined the perfect dynamic. And it sucks because I think this is actually a really good progression for the character to have. Of course he'd grow more numb to the mindless murder and horrible acts he witnesses on a daily basis. But it shouldn't have happened in Season 3. We've spent more time with this new version of Morty than the innocent, empathetic one. So now we've just got two very depressing characters. They don't complement each other nearly as well. But beyond that, I find it impossible to feel connected to any of them, because nobody feels like a real character. They all come off like general archetypes that can be morphed into whatever the writer wants at any given time. Their personalities flip-flop so much that it becomes hard to care about these people anymore. I think a big part of that comes back to the topic of meta-humor, and how it's affected how Rick and Morty tells its serious stories. You're right, it shows a lack of faith in their core concept. Yeah, exactly. Wait, what? Serious stories? Rick and Morty is a dumb cartoon, bro. You actually expect it to be serious? Serious? How can you possibly be annoyed that Rick and Morty doesn't take itself seriously? Yeah, how could I possibly think that? Th th this isn't even a straw man argument, I literally got people telling me the exact thing. I had people genuinely telling me the whole, to be fair, you have to have a high enough IQ to understand Rick and Morty shtick. This show has not been very subtle over the years about how much it dislikes serialized stories. With Rick claiming to be a character who doesn't like repeating shit, and prefers things to remain episodic. And, and he does not like serialized drama. Right, no drama. Keep it episodic. But something unfortunate happened the one time they actually tried to tell a serious, serialized story. People loved it. People got super invested in the evil Morty subplot that they'd set up in Season 1. Who is he? What's his plan? And when, more importantly, when was he gonna return? Well, it took them all the way until Season 3, Episode 7 to show him again, in what was probably the best episode of what turned out to be an extremely lackluster season. And after that appearance, it's taken us all the way until the Season 5 finale to see him again, meaning it's taken five fucking seasons for Rick and Morty to even interact with this character for a second time. Why is that? Well, like they said, they're not into serialization. And you can really feel that hatred, because throughout the entire episode we are constantly reminded of this with tongue-in-cheek jokes towards the audience about how much they don't like doing lore shit, and how they like to keep it episodic. And by the point where we finally got to see the entirety of Rick's backstory, only for it to be followed up with Rick saying, Yes, now everyone can shut up about it. I just couldn't stop thinking, why did you even bother? When the episode starts and it's revealed that we're going to go to the Citadel, you think it's going to be a fun, action-packed adventure. Rick even makes a fourth wall break, acting excited about what's to come. Hot damn, hitting the ground running with a Citadel episode! But he completely ruins the rest of the episode by having this dumbass attitude to everything around him. I actually thought that part one of this finale was pretty solid. It told a somewhat genuine story of Rick and Morty realizing they had a toxic relationship, and parting ways at the end. It's effective because the characters themselves are taking things seriously. So it's just like we've went through an episode that had no Maddie humor, but now that they're talking about lore, they have a joke about it every fucking second. It's like they're dragging their feet in the mud and don't want to do it, but know that fans will be pissed if we go another season without getting some sort of payoff on Evil Morty. But we don't even get the satisfaction of having the reveal in-universe to our characters, because before they even meet him, Rick says, Fine, I could eat, but the second he reveals he's evil, we're gone. 
Like, can you not even give us a simple fucking reveal? Like, we the audience knows he's evil, but our main characters aren't aware. But because Rick already basically feels like an extension of the writer at this point, of course he'd know the president is evil, why not? Even beyond Rick's attitude, the writing overall just feels lazier in the way they handle his dumb self-aware shit. Rick just flat out saying, Well, I forgot I literally have a screwdriver in my hand. I mean, the doy, I'm basically Inspector Gadget. Uh will never ever be as funny as him randomly saying, Morty, hop on my back! Why? Go, go, <clears throat> Sanchez ski shoes! One of them is a joke made out of a reference, and the other is just a reference. I don't like using this phrase because I know there's a lot of hard work put into making this show, but it feels like they just don't care anymore. When we saw Rick's backstory in Season 3, it was a big surprise. But then we find out that Rick faked it and it's sort of funny, you know? It's a play on the big emotional heartbreaking backstory and they make fun of that. But in Season 5, we find out that that very same fake backstory was actually real? It's like they couldn't be bothered coming up with a new one because of their discontent towards lore and thought, eh, whatever, we'll just say that other one actually happened. But when we find out that, there's no actual impact to it. I don't feel anything, because Rick himself is too self-aware to feel anything either. If you don't want to do lore stuff, then I'd rather you just not do it instead of half-assing it. By the end of the episode, there's this big climax where the Citadel is being destroyed and Rick and Morty are trying to escape in time, with the two reconciling and working together to get in a way on a ship. But I can't buy this moment at all all are managed to care about this character growth because these no longer feel like real or genuine people to me. You know what it feels like? It's, it's like watching a movie with someone where they've already seen it and don't really care about it being your first time watching, so they have no remorse about pointing out how dumb things are or talking about stuff before it's actually happened. You no longer feel any kind of impact towards anything, it just makes you really, really want to punch that person in the face. And don't give me that shit of, it's Rick and Morty, bro. Do you really expect it to take itself seriously? This is the show where the main character turns into a pickle. I just don't think you understand it. Again, not a straw man. People genuinely told me this. But it's like, yeah, no, you're right, though. Rick and Morty never managed to take itself seriously. I love the episode where Rick literally tries to kill himself, then afterwards looks at the camera and says, Yep, I just did that. Or the first Evil Morty episode that ends on a big cliffhanger, with Evil Morty walking off into the distance, but then Rick walks into Freeman and remarks, Oh boy, can't wait to see him again in two seasons. Time to go onto reddit.com and see people speculate about this new character. Oh wait, that didn't happen because the series just know when was and wasn't the time for a joke. To talk more about this topic of how a joke can ruin a serious moment, I thought I'd invite YouTube personality johnny 2 Salos to talk more about this subject, as on his channel he spent a lot more time analyzing the series than me. Take it away, Johnny. Thanks, Mark. So, this is actually something I've been thinking about for a while. My friend Toonrific Tariq and I discussed it a lot when we covered Rick and Morty on our podcast, Cartoons That Curse, and we determined that what is most frustrating about the show choosing to undercut serious or emotional moments with humor is just how effective the show can be when it doesn't do that. The show obviously loves to make self-referential and meta jokes, and it has since it started, but I always think back to the sixth episode of the series, Rick Potion Number 9. This was the first episode that really established the idea of the multiverse, resulting in Rick and Morty ruining their own dimension and replacing their dead selves in a parallel one. To the audience and to Morty as a character, this was a world-shattering reveal, and rightfully, they played this reveal off as a major serious moment. The haunting music in Morty's hollow expression linger even after the episode ends, and this will always stick with me as one of the most effective moments the show has to offer. I love when Rick and Morty leans hard into the fun and absurd humor, but they've so often managed to balance that with these emotionally affecting sequences. Mark mentioned a couple great ones earlier. Both Evil Morty reveals in seasons 1 and 3 were incredible moments that took themselves completely seriously. The scene where Rick contemplates suicide in season 2 was shocking and sticks with you. Even in season 5 in the Planetina story, they end the episode focused on Morty's heartbreak and do it earnestly. And these all stand out as some of my favorite moments of the show. Now, obviously, I don't want them to do this type of thing in every episode. These moments work because they're a juxtaposition to the ridiculous humor the rest of the show has to offer. But that's why it can be so frustrating when it feels like they have great opportunities to embrace these moments and instead choose to poke fun at them. The reality is, is that a lot of the fans are actually really invested in these ongoing plot elements and the more serious aspects of the backstories. So when the show makes fun of that fact within the same moment that it's exploring them, it can sort of feel patronizing. 
and I understand that the Rick and Morty fan base can be a lot, so I'm not suggesting that the writers need to listen to the fans because they know better. I just wonder if some of these meta jabs and references might actually be detrimental to the stories they are telling, especially when they're undercutting major moments. So that's my two cents. I still really like Rick and Morty, but I kind of wish they were a little more willing to embrace their serious and emotional side. To end this off, I want to make it clear and say that I do still like Rick and Morty a lot. If anything, nothing the series does now will ever affect my enjoyment of the first two seasons. But like I said, I feel like season 5 was a pretty good step in the right direction, into recapturing the feel of them, while also taking the series in a whole new direction. And the finale definitely did do a lot of stuff I liked a ton, such as removing that dumbass thing about Rick being the most smart and powerful man in the universe, because it definitely got excessive with how godlike he was becoming, lit literally fighting a god. You know, I liked it more when he was just this smart old man. I'm not a fucking half-man, half-machine action hero who's prepared for any scenario. So it was clever for them to work around that by implying the past five seasons were pretty much set up so Rick only had to fight foes he knew he could defeat. It means there are stronger things out there that he was hiding himself from. So I'm definitely still going to be keeping up with the series to see where it heads from here, and I'm still a big fan. This was just me voicing some of my concerns with the way the writing was headed, and I hope they're able to get better about it in the next... 50 confirmed episodes, oh boy. There we go, went through an entire Rick and Morty video without playing that god-awful rap. Oh my god, it's coming, Rick fuck run!